Ah, yes. Welcome to our first narrated speed sketch. Ooh, I remember that one. Okay, mm let's talk about Altmühlopterus. It's a new name for a pterosaur we know for quite some time now. Um, before this paper by um, Stephen uh, Vidovic and uh, David Martel was published today or yesterday, I don't know when I will um, upload this video. Uh, this animal was known as Germanodactylus ramfastinus. Um, the second species of the genus uh, Germanodactylus and um, actually the bigger one of these two, the more slender one. Um, it was suspected for quite some time now that um, um, Germanodactylus uh, ramfastinus is actually a own genus and um, this paper now finally gives it uh, a own name or better that there was already a name a own name for this uh, for these specimens um, which are known from uh, the oldest is I think known from 1830s something like that um, described first by Goldfuss um, and now I don't know what I talked about. Um, yeah, it, 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 you know, yes, it was um, suspected for quite some time that these actually um, represent a, a different genus or, or something that it is worth to uh, give it their own genus name. Yeah, the, the, the skull looks quite different when you compare them, uh, these two species to each other. Uh, the dentition is different. Um, Germanodactylus ramfastinus ramf has more teeth and uh, uh, which go further back in the jaw and are more numerous at the tip of the jaw, um, the crest which runs uh, along the, um, the top of the skull is actually only known from a few adult specimens um, and it's possible that this is a, a sign of uh, sexual dimorphism. The animal um, which is now known as Altmulo uh, pterus is, um, well, I, I would say, a middle-sized pterosaur with just one uh, meter's wingspan. Um, it's known from several specimens for for quite some time now, and uh, from the Solenhofen uh, formation. And um, as you will later see in this video, the, the teeth this animal had were relatively small but numerous and um, triangular in, uh, in lateral view. And uh, it's often said this, that this animal would be a fish eater but from the stature of the animal and, and the dentition. I would rather say that this animal um, ate everything which uh, would fit inside its jaws. Um, that it walked through shallow waters of the Solenhofen Lagoon and picked uh, for small fish, crustaceans, um, uh, carry on uh, insects, maybe dead insects which uh, swam on the on the surface of the of the water. Um, we have s some very nice uh, dragonflies, for example, from that formation. And there is 
also I think at least one specimen where um, it's suspected that uh, the damage on the wing was caused by a pterosaur. Um, yeah, as you as you can see here, uh, I gave mine uh, quite wrinkly skin. That's actually a detail that is uh, only ha has only um, aesthetic purpose. There is no actual fossil evidence for such a facial um, skin uh, skin structure. Um, but I like to to give this uh, structure to all my uh, Ctenochasmid uh, pterosaurs. That's Ctenochasmidae. That's uh, group this um, animal Altmühle pteros belongs to um, and where it also came out uh, in this new paper. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why I like to do it this way, but uh, it's, it's a little um, visual code, you might say, I, I give my pterosaurs in this case at least of, of this family. Yeah, little mistakes here and there. Uh, I, I made the pterophus a little more denser at this that angle. Um, actually, um, Altmühle pteros or Germanodactylus ramphastinus, uh, how it was called, uh, is probably the one of the first pterosaurs which we are known from um, pycnor fibers or pterophas. Uh, the first specimen which is now destroyed, um, it, it, I think it was destroyed during the second world war, maybe in the same bombing that um, also destroyed the spinosaurus holotip type. Um, that specimen actually had um, probably little um, pycnor fibers preserved, but uh, different um, researchers later claimed that these structures were just um, artifacts in the rock matrix around the fossil and no actual preserved um, fibers of, of the integument of the animal. Um, but we actually actually now know uh, another fossil of a Solenhofen pterosaur where we can see uh, the pycnor fibers and uh, boss uh, specimens were described by the same researcher back in the day. So it's quite possible that the holotype of Altmühlopteros also preserved um, uh, these uh, structures. Yeah. I think this will do it for now. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm currently working on the limbs. There comes uh, the second wing, which is stretched forward a little bit. I will leave you now to the rest of the video. I hope you enjoy it. If you have questions or anything else, you want to say put it in the comment section I would love if you leave a like um, by the way I'm now on Twitter too so if you want to follow me there you're welcome to do that and um, yeah I will now go to bed <laughs> I had a long train ride behind me from Luxembourg back uh, back to home and yeah we'll need some rest now bye